Hello friends, I'm Jeff here. Welcome to my corner. Welcome to Quick Tip Tuesday number 15. Uh, today we're going to talk about making bedrolls or tarps for your armor piece out of milliput. And yes, again, it is milliput. What can I say? I like to work with the stuff. There is two things that I really like that I always have within reach of my workbench and that is uh, milliput or in this case epoxy sculpt and the good old tube of raw umber oil paint. Uh, those are the two things that I always uh, always use basically on a daily basis. Uh, I should have actually, I should have a couple holsters made so I can carry it around all day. But all joking aside, with milliput you can do a lot of wonderful things once you put your mind to it. So let me demonstrate real quick what, uh, what you can do uh, as far as uh, making tarps or bedrolls. And then we'll come back for some final words after that. Stay tuned. When you're working with like a, a milliput kind of a putty, uh, or in this case, as I mentioned, the epoxy sculpt. I like epoxy sculpt. Uh, they come in a couple of colors, but I like the lighter colored one. And you get a lot more uh, value for your money. Uh, also, they come in containers, so they last a little bit longer than milliput. But if you are if you like milliput and you're used to it, uh, go for it. Uh, absolutely, it's the same thing. I just prefer this uh, over the milliput, actually. But again, that's a personal preference. Second of all, you need like a little round shape like this. This is a PVC pipe, a piece of a PVC pipe. You can find those in the hardware store or wherever they sell plumbing material. It doesn't really have to be a PVC pipe. You can easily use, let's say, uh, an old uh, or an empty bottle of paint or thinner, or even a beer bottle. You know, if you like beer, then go for it. Uh, at least you have a reason to drink it. But as long as it's smooth and round, yeah, you're in good shape. Another thing is a scraper blade, and I like these because they're sharp, they're like razor sharp, but they, they are actually uh, replacement blades for a paint scraper. And again, you'll find out, uh, you'll find those uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's in the paint section where they sell the scrapers, uh, you'll find these replacement blades. They usually come in a pack of three or five, and they last a long time, doesn't cost really a lot. Uh, so uh, this is good to have. And then of course, a cup of water, uh, uh, and you will find out why. Then uh, talcum powder. Talcum powder, as we mentioned so many times in the previous uh, milliput session, uh, talcum powder uh, prevents from the the milliput to stick to your fingers or to the base of your of your workspace. So uh, again, it, any brand will do. Uh, this is Johnson's baby powder. I found those in the travel section at Walmart. I think it's like a dollar or something. So lasts a long, long time. But that's what you need. Then a couple of paint brushes. Uh, again, it doesn't really have to be expensive brushes, just something that you have laying around. No, uh, this is a zero, this is a number three, but anything small uh, that you definitely uh, you need a couple brushes. And then last but not least, a couple of these. Uh, these are, uh, uh, I think they're like dental tools and you can find those uh, uh, around in the in the hobby or you can Google them. Uh, we are looking into that to getting uh, these in our tool section. But uh, it really, you, you really don't need these per se, but if you have them or you're thinking about getting some, they will help. Uh, you can also make your own little tools to make indentations or, and I'll, hopefully I, I can show you this while we're, we're making the tarps or the, the bedrolls. So, uh, but if you have a couple of these uh, pointy things, uh, it always helps. And uh, that's about it. Uh, that's all you need. Uh, talcum powder, a cup of water, a round tool, uh, a scraper blade, a couple brushes, and of course, the putty itself. So let's start with making a tarp. Like, uh, let's say that we, we have like uh, uh, our armor piece is finished and we want to drape a tarp realistically, um, over, like cover an area. Uh, let me show you how we go about. So first of all, we, we're gonna mix the epoxy sculpt. Uh, we do it like a 50-50 kind of a mix. So you take equal amounts out of each jar. And uh, I think for what we have to do now, uh, this will be enough, I guess. So, and then you start mixing this until, you become, until it becomes a uniform color. Again, they, these come in, uh, in several colors. You have gray colors, white colors, darker colors. But I always like to go with the white color. Uh, it's just, again, personal preference. Uh, all the products are the same, even if you get like a dark gray or a white, it's just the pigmentation. Uh, but uh, the result is the same, it's the same material. 
Once the mixing is done, usually it takes about a minute uh, and you have this ball of uh, uniform color, that's the time when you sprinkle it with the talcum powder. So you, you put some on, the, on your base, it's like a baker's dough, and you put some on, on the base and then press it in there on both sides and then of course uh, put some talcum powder on the surface. Try to separate it a little bit, try to make it a little bit flatter, like this. And then you take your round tool and then you start to roll it. As I mentioned, uh, it's like a, baker's, uh, like a, a baker bakes his, uh, his, uh, his dough, or makes his dough actually. And you have to do that a couple times. Now I'm wearing gloves here, uh, that's just for filming purposes. Uh, but uh, you really don't need to need to wear the gloves, but uh, I just do it. Uh, nobody wants to see my ugly hands anyway, so that's why I put the, glo the gloves on. Uh, but it's, it's not toxic, it's water-based. Now when you're doing this, when you're rolling this flat, always make sure that you pick it up uh, after a couple strokes, after a couple rolls, you pick it back up and reapply some talcum powder on both sides because you don't want that uh, even with the talcum powder, if you're not careful enough and you keep rolling without picking it back up, it will stick. It will stick to the plastic. Uh, no matter the talcum powder, it will still stick to the, to the plastic sheet or the flat surface that you have. And then you run into problems. So after each roll, each, each time you go over there, make sure that it comes off. And then uh, you're always sure that you're not gonna have a problem uh, in taking in taking the, or peeling the thing back off uh, and prevent it from sticking to the surface. And like I said, uh, even if you have to apply some more talcum powder, there's no, no big deal. And as I mentioned before, it's just a matter of uh, getting a feel for it, getting, making sure that you know, okay, uh, it's time to peel it off, it's thin enough, the feel is enough. Uh, now, <clears throat> the thing is with, uh, with uh, like when you get in this kind of a thin shape already, uh, if the milliput is uh, just mixed, when you just mixed it and you start rolling it, it is still very, very uh, soft. So it's easy, especially uh, to leave a fingerprint. If you pick it up with your hands, uh, it's, uh, it's easy to leave a mark. So this is where, I, and I talked about this in the beginning of the video, to find that sweet spot. Uh, this is where, after the mixing, you have to wait maybe a couple minutes, five, 10, 15 minutes, after you roll it flat and you put it back down, that you, you basically uh, find uh, the right timing to start working with it. So it's not hard enough that it's set completely and you can't manipulate it anymore, but it's still soft enough that you can that you can basically mold it or, or put it in a shape that you that you desire that you like to. It is very difficult for me to point that out uh, during this, this this quick tip video, but uh, my suggestion is after you mix it, after you roll it, uh, just to leave it for about five, 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, and then come back to it and maybe roll some more, or uh, if it's big enough or flat enough, you can already start uh, basically molding it. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Uh, maybe I'll go a couple more times over it to make it really thin. And then I'm gonna walk away from it for about five, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and then we'll cut a shape out. And that's where the, uh, the uh, scraper comes in. So uh, here we have it. I've made a couple more rolls over it. And now we're gonna take our scraper, our sharp scraper, and we know we're gonna cut like a square. Like this. Doesn't really have to be perfect. And there we have our tarp. This is gonna be our tarp. And for demo purposes, I'm just gonna drape it here, uh, a little bit realistic looking. Uh, it's not gonna be long here because this is the part of my, my Jackson that uh, I'm building, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna put a tarp on there anyway. But just for, for purposes, for demo purposes, I'm gonna just lay it on here so you get the idea what I try to accomplish. 
So now we're gonna try to pick it up and this is where our cup of water comes into play. This is just plain tap water. And then uh, maybe we can wet the surface around it a little bit so it will slide. Now before we go on, I just wanna point out a couple of things. First of all, if you already painted your model and it's completely finished, it's quite okay that you put the tarp on there or the milliput on there. Like I said, it's uh, it's based on water. You, you can clean it up with water. So it's not gonna eat into the paint. It's not gonna damage your paint or your whatever weathering you did to it. But um, I would suggest, I would advise actually, uh, that before you build your model or before your model is going to be painted that you already that you already have an idea where you're going to put a, the tarp on there because what happens is that you can easily pick that up mold it in shape without damaging anything and then once it's dry once after five six hours when it's really dry that you can easily chip it back off and it will still have the shape and the form uh, it will still keep the shape and the form that you original uh, originally molded so um, you, what I'm trying to say here is that you can completely finish your model, uh, you can paint it, weather it, and then uh, basically, finally, you can put the the tarp on there that's already pre-molded. So, but that's up to you. Uh, you can do it both ways. I did it both ways. It worked both ways. It just uh, like if you already planned to uh, to have a tarp on there, it's better uh, to do it while you didn't paint the model yet, because uh, like I said, it's easy. To get back off so uh, let's uh, let's see what we can do with this uh, again I'll, let me add some more water here and then we'll pick it up be very careful and just lay it on there and then just try to as best as you can uh, and the shape that you can try to put the tarp in there or on there again this is up to uh, personal preference again uh, I'm just gonna do uh, some some odd shaping here or odd molding there and the good thing is uh, it sticks it's you know it doesn't fall off so uh, this is the shape you can easily let it dry and then once it's completely dry once it's completely hardened you just have to put like maybe a sharp knife under it or even this brush and it will pop off and then you can either paint your model and paint the tarp uh, separately and then eventually add it back on and it will adapt to the contour that you already uh, have, uh, had reserved for it. I think I, I, I wouldn't even touch it anymore and it took me it took me less than two three minutes to put it on there. So all right now bed rolls, bed rolls are uh, the same principle mm. again with the talcum powder. I had some leftover from my tarp here I cut a piece off and uh, so I'm gonna roll it a little bit more just to get it nice and smooth again so once again we take our scraper blade and we cut like straight edges onto the piece that we uh, have left over now of course bed rolls it comes in different shapes and, si and sizes so for demo purposes, I'm just going to uh, make a small one for now. So again, we start to roll this up. We, we basically roll it like the real thing. Just be patient, very gently. So now what we're trying to do is we're gonna try to get some pleats in there and wrinkles. And we do this with a brush. Just gently press the, br the brush in there and try to make it somewhat realistic looking. The idea is to get like two ropes around it, like two tie downs. So in real life, uh, whenever you tie a rope around a bedroll or a sleeping bag or anything, uh, there is of course always the, uh, the side that is tied together. So you have to also simulate that and that you can do 
with these things here. This is also when your where your brush comes in. This is a little bit more difficult than making the the, uh, the tarps, but still, uh, like with the tarps, like with anything else, it's practice. I think you get the idea what I'm trying to do here. I don't know if you can see it uh, real good here, but I'll post some pictures after, after we're done. And to simulate the tie downs, uh, we're gonna make some strings, uh, again, out of milliput. And we're doing this by just rolling the millet put back and forth. Pick this up again. And just try to lay it on there. The nice thing about millet put is that as long as uh, you keep it moist it, and it dries, it will adhere. You don't have to use glue or anything. Uh, you just have to use water to make it stick. And there you have it. So, and that's what it all is about. Now, it is a little bit too soft to pick it up right now and put it on there, but I will, I'm gonna wait about five, 10 minutes and then add it on. As I mentioned, I will, um, I will post some pictures, uh, but that's what it is. And you can make this as complicated or as simple as you like. Uh, you can do a lot more with Milliput and we'll come back in uh, later sessions to make uh, some more complicated stuff. But for now, this is actually a nice addition uh, to, your, uh, to your armor piece. Uh, you can make them as big as or as small as you want. You can do all kinds of stuff. So I can emphasize not enough. Uh, there is so much you can do with milliput. So if it doesn't work the first time, please uh, keep uh, doing it, keep practicing, and eventually you will become good at it. And you can, you can I mean, like I, like I mentioned before, sky's the limit. So. so once again, there is so much you can do. There's so much you can do with Milliput. Uh, and if it doesn't work out the first time, if it doesn't work out the second time, the third time, keep practicing because every time, every time you will learn something and it, that will prevent you to make that same mistake again next time. And once you get it under control, uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun uh, working with Milliput and it opens up a whole new world in uh, adding details to your, uh, to your model. Well, there you have it. Uh, like I said, it's no big deal. Well, I can't say it's no big deal, but it's it just, you know, it's a, it's a matter of trial and error. I mentioned it so many times in my previous sessions that you just have to try it. You know, and if it doesn't work out the, second, the first time, then try it the second and the third time, and eventually you'll get the hang of it. You just have to find that sweet spot after you mix it and the time that it dries a little bit. Uh, you have to find that, that spot where you can pick it up without leaving any marks and all that, and when it's just, it's just the right density to manipulate it. And once you find that out, once you know uh, that, that basically that right moment where you can, or the right feel, that opens up a whole new world. You can make so many things out of milliput, like strings, cables, uh, seat belts, uh, seat cushions. Uh, you can make tarps, bedrolls, backpacks, rucksacks. Anything, you can even use it as a filler. Works pretty good as a filler too, as a, as a putty to fill a gap or something. It, it sands, it's really condensed. So it's, it's a very good product uh, once you get used to it. So I would encourage you to at least try it once, twice, three times. If it doesn't work, keep trying it. You don't have to do it every day, but once in a while, just to go back to it. And, and uh, every time that you maybe not succeed in, in uh, getting what you want, you have learned something. And then finally, you will get there. And I will come back to this uh, subject a couple more times, so uh, no need to panic. Uh, if you say after one or twice, ah, I can do this, you can. Uh, trust me, if I can learn it, you can too. Uh, it's no big deal, you just have to be patient. So that's for now. I hope you uh, uh, are a little bit wiser about this. Uh, um, then all there is to say, like, please uh, don't forget to like and, and uh, share us on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Jeffy's Corner. And then, of course, 
Uh, most importantly, don't forget to sign up uh, with your email at uh, Jeffy's Corner Store, uh, www.jeffycornerstore.com uh, for all the updates or if you want to browse our store or of course in the best case scenario for your further uh, future uh, uh, hobby purchases. So, uh, but for now I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, be safe out there, take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys next week in another Quick Tip Tuesday or uh, at, uh, definitely on Sunday at 7 o'clock Central Time for our live session. For now, Jeffy here, signing off. Mm -hmm.